co-parenting. So their children are having to go between two houses during COVID. Co-parenting situation is going to be different for different families mm -hmm. um, and for a bunch of different reasons. Uh, and I've seen all kinds of solutions around it. It can be that, for example, both parents are working from home and therefore taking the kids back and forth between the homes is uh, fine because you're there. No one is exposed outside the family. But you might have one parent who's actually considered a necessary workforce person and they're still going out into the world. And the other parent is saying, I think you should forfeit visitation because you are now a risk. Now, if you are in a cooperative separation or divorce, people can be reasonable and come up with some, you know, of course we always put the kids first, but we also have to put society first, which we, you know, and, and the spread of this disease first. And it may go against our 50-50 parenting arrangement. We might need to go to 100% now or 80-20 or whatever, it even, and not that it would be perpetuated, um, but whatever you decide, you need to make sure that it gets written down and that there is a record of that change. Not necessarily that you need to hire a lawyer. You, any changes need to be in, in, in writing so that there isn't later uh, a claim that there was a breach of, of agreement. I've also seen places where the parents actually get along. And so even though it's not their ideal situation, the, the partners have moved back in together so that the, the child has both parents under one roof and they're, they're um, doing their isolating together so that they can keep both, both parents. But for families that maybe don't get along? This uh, is going to be a test to the system. Kids add, add stress and decrease our psychological happiness. Sorry, until, until, until they're grown and out of the house. And the worst years seems to be middle school. Parents report the most dissatisfaction, grade seven, grade eight. Every kid should have the number for texting, kids helpline. Kids need to reach out too. They need a valve. They're often not gonna confide in their parents if their parents are part of their, their problem. Um, there are mental health supports, Connects Ontario, and they've just put all kinds of um, funding to go towards mental health initiatives in this province, and I assume other provinces of, uh, of some amount as well, because it is very apparent that this is going to have a mental health cost. So reach out and ask for help, ask for support, put mental health first and foremost on your agenda. What would the markers be um, in a child that is beginning to experience higher levels of anxiety and depression? Most parents have a, a, a spidey sense um, about their kids. And we're looking for anything that deviates outside of the baseline normal behavior. It will manifest itself in the body, headaches, tummy aches, suddenly sleeping a lot or not sleeping at all. Suddenly no appetite or a lot of gorge eating. Anytime they say comments like, I hate myself, I wish I wasn't born, um, you'd be better without me. Those are all thoughts that we want to actually ask the next question. You know, are you, are you thinking of harming yourself? Are you thinking of killing yourself? And parents get afraid that if they bring up suicidality, that they might encourage it or, or that, oh, I never thought about it before. Maybe I should. But it's quite the opposite. It's um, doing a, a check like that makes them know that you're, you're seeing that things are really more dire for them. And just so parents know, it's not not uncommon for kids to uh, kind of have like a uh, we call it suicidal ideation where they just actually kind of allow their imagination to go to what if I killed myself and then kids get really freaked out by that because they've started to think about it and so um, that uh, is a sign of distress but it is not necessarily a guarantee that things will get worse and that this is somebody who's going to commit suicide things don't need to cross a a boundary into a mental health diagnosis before parents get help. And, and maybe this could go from parent to parent or parent to child. If someone is experiencing a heightened sense of depression or anxiety, that tends to be like a reclusive type of feeling. And I'm, I'm not so sure that in that moment, that's when people are going to reach out. There, there's internalizing people and externalizing people. So there's also some people where you might not notice this, but your kid's actually really aggressive. But what looks like little outbursts can actually be that arousal curve so, so hyper aroused from anxiety that in their fight flees free, they actually go to fight. Um, it's not always the retreating 
flea type reaction. Sometimes you can get that more aggressive in your face kind of reaction that really comes from, you know, when the world feels uncontrollable and scary, put your dukes up. A lot of reasons to be anxious right now that are not irrational. I, I know that this will be very helpful and it will give parents just a bit of breathing room. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anything I can do to help. All right. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>